Hi, good morning. It's Tuesday. It's 9 o'clock. I'm Victoria Derbyshire. Welcome to our programme. People with mental health problems are waiting so long to get the help they desperately need that lives are being ruined with jobs lost and marriages ending. Experts are warning today. We'll talk to some of those caught in this trap, including one mum who waited so long to get help for her anorexic daughter. Let us know your own experiences of trying to get help. Treatment for mental health issues. Also, the remarkable story of a 20... We'll bring you that film after half nine. Also, I am not a victim. The words of Sean Walsh's former partner in a statement saying their relationship's over after he was photographed kissing Dan Strictly partner Katia Jones on a night out in London. Rebecca Humphrey says she suspected something was going on but was allegedly labelled a psycho for suggesting it. She now says she feels free and has called on other women to trust their instincts. Does that statement mean inevitably that Sean Walsh will leave Strictly Come Dancing this weekend? Good morning, hello, welcome to the programme. We're live until 11, as we are each weekday. I want to know from you this morning, is it inevitable then that Sean Walsh will leave Strictly? Uh, can you imagine voting for him? After his girlfriend, Rebecca Humphreys, his ex-girlfriend, Rebecca Humphreys, released a statement last night about his drunken kiss with Strictly pro partner, Katia Jones. She goes on in her statement to urge women who are out there who deep down feel worthless and trapped with a man they love to believe in your own instincts and believe in yourself, adding, I'm not sorry I took the cat. What do you think of her statement? What should happen to Sean Walsh and Katia on Strictly? Can you imagine voting for them again? Uh, should he take the decision to leave? And does any of this actually affect his ability to dance? Let me know this morning. Use the hashtag Victoria Live. If you're sending us an email, it's victoria at bbc.co.uk and there's Facebook and WhatsApp as well. Our top news story today, the second suspect in the Salisbury nerve agent attack has been named. The investigative website Bellingcat says the man who called himself Alexander Petrov and claimed to be a tourist is in fact a military doctor employed by the Russian intelligence service, the GRU. Andy Moore reports. Subject to strictly Madison emails to say, I think Sean Walsh should leave. The public is not impressed meaning he will most likely be voted off this weekend anyway. Stuart on Twitter says, seriously, you know, we're all going to be watching these two this Saturday to see what happens next, with the dancing going on in the background. Brackets, EastEnders comes to Strictly, folks. Uh, and this on the subject of mental health and how long you have waited for treatment, which we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes. Claire has got in touch to say, I'm a 40-year-old woman. I had a breakdown three months ago. I've been diagnosed with PTSD clinical depression and acute anxiety. I'm still waiting to see a psychologist to start working through those issues. I've been waiting three months now, and I now face having my wages cut to half because I've been off sick for so long. So on top of my mental health, health illness, I'm now incredibly anxious that I can't afford to live or pay my bills. And sometimes I wonder why I bothered begging for help. Do get in touch with your own experiences. Uh, let's just go on. Good morning, Tuesday morning. Welcome to the programme. People diagnosed with mental health illnesses are waiting months and sometimes years for specialist treatment, according to research today by the Royal College of Psychiatrists. In one case, astonishingly, a man waited 13 years from initially being referred to getting the right treatment. The Royal College says it's a scandal that's being caused by lack of workforce in mental health. The government says it's transforming services with record amounts of funding, with the NHS spending almost £12 billion on mental health last year. So what is going wrong? The remarkable Katie Stubblefield and her family. So everyone's talking about Strictly Come Dancing's Sean Walsh and the fact that he's admitted kissing his fellow professional dancer, Katia Jones. Last night, Sean, Walsh, Sean Walsh's former partner, Rebecca Humphreys, said on Twitter she was not a victim. Uh, we've got her statement here. Let's have a look. It's just her side of uh, the story. Thank you very much, Simon. Hello, it's just after 10. I'm Victoria Derbyshire this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about austerity a week after the Prime Minister Theresa May said this. According to new research, the effects of austerity, public spending cuts, are not being felt equally around the country. We'll talk to people across the UK whose lives have been changed by austerity. 
Also, in the next hour of the programme, we speak to the mum who's resorted to wearing a sandwich board in an attempt to help track down her son's alleged killer. Tracy Hansen's 21-year-old son, Josh, was stabbed to death three years ago this week. We'll hear from Tracy and Josh's sister about their search for the man who killed him, who they think killed him, and also hear from the defect detective inspector who's leading the case. And it's been called the curse of Strictly. One of this year's contestants, Sean Walsh, was photographed kissing his dancing partner, as you know, on a night out in London. Last night, his now ex-girlfriend, Rebecca Humphreys, tweeted a statement alleging that Walsh accused her of being a psycho. What do you think should happen? To Sean Walsh and his dancing partner, should they be thrown off? Will you be voting for them ever again? Or is it just a dancing competition? The private life has got nothing to do with anything. Rachel Bannister. Uh, Emma says, I had a full breakdown two years ago, severe depression and anxiety. It's taken me 18 months to get CBT treatment after being dealt with by the crisis team. The last two years have been the hardest of my life. Thank you very much for watching today. Thanks for getting in touch too. Newsroom Live, BBC Newsroom Live is next. Have a good day. We're back tomorrow night.